Hello everyone, it's good to see you today on Sports and Money. I'm Benjamin Parker. Thank you for being a part with us today. We're looking again at the Kansas City Chiefs. Specifically, we're looking at their draft picks from just a week or two ago. And we're going to see in this video today how they're going to fit in over the next season, how they're expected to perform on the field, and how they'll fit in with the defense, specifically this season. Part two, and we'll do this video again using the same board so that the second video that you see coming up will focus more on how these draft picks will fit in in the big picture over the next two or three seasons and what the Chiefs front office might have been thinking financially as they made these picks. Because no doubt the Chiefs surprised everybody with their top three draft picks this season. We'll look at that in just a minute. Let's take a look at the big board first. I've got a lot on here. I won't cover it all in this first video. Some of it will be on the second video. Let me show you what we've got right here. These are your top two highest uh, paid safeties on the team. Eric Berry, Daniel Sorensen. Eric Berry will make him $13 million during this upcoming season. In 2019, he'll be making $16.5 million. So for every player you see, the first number is the 2018 cap hit. The second number is the 2019 cap hit. So those are your highest paid safeties, Berry and Sorensen. You step down right here is the linebackers for the team. This is Houston and Ford. Those are your edge rushers, your outside linebackers in this defense. And of course, Hitchens and Raglan will be your inside linebackers for the upcoming season. Pretty solidly set there. You move right over here. These are the cornerbacks, the two highest paid cornerbacks on the team for the upcoming season with Fuller and Nelson. And down here, this is your defensive line, your three-man defensive front with Chris Jones, Xavier Williams, and Alan Bailey. This is your defense for the season. Right here are your four top draft picks. I didn't include all the draft picks. I really didn't have room. Besides that, your sixth round draft picks and beyond tend to not have a big impact on your first season. Can they? Can you find a piece of treasure somewhere in the sixth and seventh round? Of course you can. In general, though, sixth and seventh round draft picks have a very good chance of even not making the team or they just blend in for a couple of seasons and after a couple of seasons they've learned to contribute and play some important role as a backup somewhere on the team. If you've really done a great job drafting then you may find a starter out of that after a couple of seasons but we're just going to focus today on their top four draft picks that they got in rounds two and three and four. Let's look at the first guys. I want to say this before we start. The Chiefs did surprise everybody. Everybody we were looking at, all the experts, even the Chiefs people who were telling us what the Chiefs needs were, and they were right. The needs were at safety at the Sorensen spot. There's a lot of competition here at this spot. It's not just Sorensen. You've got several other guys competing. You've got Nelson here at the other cornerback spot, cornerback two. There's a ton of competition for that spot. Those by far are two of the weakest spots on the entire team. You've also got the defensive end spot that they could have gone after an edge rusher to replace either Bailey or Houston or Ford in a season or two. The Chiefs didn't go after an edge rusher. The Chiefs really didn't go after any secondary help other than that pick number 124. We'll get to that in a second with our Monty Watts. What the Chiefs really hit hard was the defensive line position and the base defensive end position and then some of the interior linebacker spots. So the Chiefs really surprised a lot of people. Most people weren't picking this. They said if, if the Chiefs were going to go defense, they were going to go secondary or edge rush, and they really didn't do that at, at all. So we'll look at that in just a second. Let's start off with Breland Speaks from Mississippi. Four-year guy. I think you're going to like Breland Speaks. He's got a high motor. He showed an ability in his fourth season to get to the quarterback. He showed an ability through his technique through his effort, through just his high motor, to consistently be able to get to the quarterback during his final season. He did not show that in his first three seasons at Ole Miss. He is not a natural edge rusher. He is not a Justin Houston, as far as we can tell. He's not a guy who can come in off the edge with that quick twitch first step and just light you up with speed on the outside. That's not what he does. But he did show in his final season at Ole Miss and ability, and he played defensive tackle at Ole Miss, so he's really moving from defensive tackle to defensive end, probably an Allen Bailey spot at times. What the Chiefs are looking for here in this next season 
is either for Alan Bailey to step it up and play even better than he has. Not that he struggled, but he hasn't played great either. So they're either looking for Alan Bailey to step up or you're looking for Braylon Speaks to step up. So Speaks will get some playing time at that defensive end position if he's doing well as, as the Chiefs expect him to. Will Braylon Speaks start this season? Probably not. I don't expect any of these four players to start for the Chiefs this season. That's not unusual. Most of the time when you're drafted in the second round, you are not necessarily drafting a guy that you expect to start the upcoming season. Do people start who get drafted out of the second round? Of course they do, all the time, every single season. There are guys who are just that good coming out of the second round. They just explode. They're better than people thought they were going to be. Usually, though, when you have second-round draft picks starting in their first season, it's for two reasons. Either there's an injury on the team that opened up the spot, or the team just didn't have the money available to pay a veteran to play in that spot, and the second-round draft pick was just forced into action. So, could some of these guys get draft, get, who got drafted get into starting roles before the season's over? Of course they could. It could very easily happen. But as the season starts out, you're really not looking for any of these four guys to take on a starting role for the Chiefs. If they do at the start of the season, then they have just really stepped up and surprised everybody with how good they are. So I don't expect Brillen Speaks to be starting at the start of the season. He might, but don't look for it. Look for him to just get some snaps right off the bat, right off game one, get mixed into the rotation with Bailey and even some with Jones. He's got experience at defensive tackle, but he is not a natural NFL defensive tackle. He is naturally a defensive end for a three-man front that the Chiefs play, so he's really a perfect fit for that, and the Chiefs must have really loved him, but Brett Beach traded up to get him. Would I have done what the Chiefs did on defense here with their draft picks? Not necessarily, but I understand why they did it. Had I been drafting, I would have loved to have seen them either pick up a cornerback there were a couple of cornerbacks available at that time who got drafted just a couple of picks later or go with an edge rusher. I would have really liked to have seen them pick out a true edge rusher. They didn't do that either. The Chiefs just didn't feel like the people who were available at that time with those spots were what they wanted. And they definitely felt like Breland Speaks was what they wanted. And listen, if you're Brett Beach or any general manager worth your salt, you cannot draft based on what other people think. You've got to go with your instincts. So if you think a guy like Speaks or anybody else in your draft, you just have them graded highly, you've got to go with your instincts and you've got to pick that out because it's your job on the line. And based on how you draft, it will depend on how long you get to keep that job. So I don't blame Brett Beach for doing it. It's not necessarily what I would have done. I don't also think it's the worst thing either. I certainly understand what they're looking at. Breland Speaks is the guy who can get to the quarterback from the defensive end spot, not as an edge rusher, but just as a good base defensive end, he will also have experience at the defensive tackle spot. He will also have at least some experience in trying to stop the run, although I don't know that that's his strength. A guy who does have a strength at stopping the run is Derek Naughty. Derek Naughty, his true ability is to stop the run. He is huge. He plays defensive tackle and from Florida State, and he is massive. The Chiefs struggled on defense all over the place last year, but they especially struggled to stop the run. And particularly in their playoff game against the Titans, their glaring weakness was stopping the run. Derek Naughty, and I don't know if the Chiefs plan to do this before the draft or not, but he was available in their picking. Derek Naughty has been brought in for one reason and one reason only, and that is to stop the run, to keep the Chiefs from bleeding at that spot. And so Derek Naughty, he's going to get a lot of playing time. He should not probably supplant Xavier Williams at defensive tackle. Xavier Williams brought in on a relatively cheap free agent contract. Xavier Williams has experience. I don't expect him to get displaced in the starting lineup. I think he'll just have enough experience to hang on to that starting spot. But Derek Naughty is definitely going to be brought in to stop the run. That's really why Anthony Hitchens was signed as well is an ability to stop the stuff on the inside to really create a strong inside presence. That's why Xavier Williams was signed, and that's why Derek Naughty has been drafted, to stop the run. Can he rush the passer? Not really. Does he have the ability to get to the passer? He hasn't really shown that, but he has definitely shown his inside strength is to stop the run. He's huge. He's going to be tough to move off the blocks, 
And that's what the Chiefs were thinking when they picked him up there at, at that spot. So you see the moves. The Chiefs have tried to get really strong up the middle on the inside with Naughty and Williams and Hitchens. They're trying to get strong on the inside. And really with Breland Speaks as well, they're just trying to provide some real strength on the inside middle core of that defense to provide a better base for the upcoming season. Don't know that they're going to be massively, hugely upgraded, but at least they're not going to be weak or soft at that spot with Hitchens and Williams and Speaks and Naughty. Now, let's move over. Dorian O'Daniel, drafted number 100 overall, so he's a top 100 player. I think you're going to really like Dorian O'Daniel. He is a monster on special teams. He is a ball hawk at times. He's always right in the middle of the action. He's very fast. He's very athletic. He can cover people from the linebacker spot. At Clemson University, he tended to play the linebacker spot most of the time. His true weight that he plays at right now is not that of a typical NFL linebacker. So you have to worry on the line of scrimmage, he might get pushed around a little bit. But what he can also do, Dorian O'Daniel can move over and play some of that light safety roles, or he can cover the slot receivers. He's fast enough to do that. He's smart enough to do that. He can play, play on a really good defense at Clemson University, a top-notch defense, and under a great coordinator with Brett Venables, Dorian O'Daniel. I think you're really going to like him in years to come. His impact this season, his biggest impact, will just be making the defense more athletic, more fast, provide some flexibility on the defense. He can help cover. And this will help provide some competition at the cornerback spot, not necessarily cornerback, but at the nickel spot perhaps, perhaps at this safety spot, perhaps just to spell some of these guys at linebacker. He is very fast. He is not necessarily a pass rusher. He is not necessarily a sack the quarterback kind of guy, but he plays really well in space. He loves to cover. He loves to move around. He's very flexible. I think you're really going to like Dorian O'Daniel, especially in the years to come as he gets more used to the NFL. Speed will not be a problem for him. It will just be getting used to the assignments and all the different and varied things the NFL offenses do and that quarterbacks do and offensive coordinators get into. Once he gets used to that, you're really going to like Dorian O'Daniel in years to come. Final pick for, uh, that I'm going to look at today, and of course, they, got, they also added a cornerback to compete at, safe, at, 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 at the quarterback spot. He was a sixth-round pick. I don't think that's really going to add a lot to your depth. But Armani Watts, drafted number 124 overall out of Texas A&M. He's a safety. He's going to provide competition right here with Daniel Sorensen and with a couple of the other guys at safety. Barry's locked in. Barry is healthy. He's your guy at safety. But at this other safety spot, Daniel Sorensen needs some competition, and the hope is that Armani Watts can provide that. So we'll see. They've at least added some depth at the safety spot, provided some competition. Don't expect Armani Watts to be starting necessarily, although he might look for either Sorensen or one of the other guys who's already on the team to, to, to take over that, that starting role. But what you will see is Watts getting some, some playing time, and you would hope in a couple of seasons to see Armani Watts take over that safety spot. So we covered a lot there. Uh, we really have these are the four, four draft picks, the top four draft picks for the Chiefs and how they'll fit in over the next season. In part two, the video you'll see coming up that we'll have a link to, you'll see how they're going to fit in over the next couple of seasons. All right, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time on Sports and Money. I'm Benjamin Parker. Thank you. Bye.